just a minute ago, I was going through some coloring books. I self-publish through Kindle Direct Publishing. Every time I get a bulk order of coloring books, I go through the box and check every single coloring book to make sure that it is in perfectly saleable condition. The reason I do this is, I guess, obvious reasons, right? Because you gotta do that every time you get something manufactured through somebody else. But with Kindle Direct Publishing, unfortunately, probably about half the time, there's something wrong with the order. In some way, shape or form, not all of the coloring books are in perfectly saleable condition. So I have to check all the books. And then when I find issues, I take photos of them and then contact Kindle Direct Publishing. And they're always really gracious. They're always very helpful and very nice to work with. They always reimburse me for the books that are damaged and that's great. However, it's just not ideal um, way to work <laughs> to get so many damaged books. So I'm trying to figure out how I wanna move forward with that to be continued. to start recording for the vlog. So, so, you know, bear with me, I'm trying. I do have a list of things that I did get done this week. I signed a licensing agreement, which is kind of a rarity these days. I licensed my work as a main part of my business for a long time. When I started gearing up with uh, retail and wholesale a few years ago, I just, um, was taking a little breather from it. So, and then life happens. So, so that's fun. I released my new mug designs. I have 10 slash 11 in this new group. One of the designs is actually, uh, there's a variation on it. That's why it's 10 slash 11, but I am supposed to get a shipment of my sample mugs. I thought I was gonna get them yesterday. They didn't come. So I think they're coming tomorrow. Oh crazy news. I posted two videos to YouTube this week. I want to do two videos a week, but I also don't want to overtax myself or make promises to myself that I can't keep or make promises to you guys that I can't keep. You don't see like my YouTube banner saying two videos a week because like that is just not the case. And I don't feel like I can like make a verbal commitment to that type of stuff, but I'm trying, I'm trying. And I have a lot that I want to share. So, and I love making videos and sharing with you guys. So, um, on a good trajectory this week and hopefully can keep that up. I really need to get the rest of my next class edited. I haven't touched it in a couple of weeks. I really need to just finish that and get it up live, but I haven't done any of that this week. In other news, this isn't really news at all, but it's just like a little tidbit. I started studying a laser 3D printer, which is like a glow forge if you're familiar with that. I came home from my sister's last Monday. I just really felt like I wanted to start making signs. And I've wanted to do this for a while, but I just, I haven't found a print on demand way to do it that I've wanted to pursue because I think what I'm looking to do is something more unique, like cuts and stuff like that. And maybe some layers. I've looked at laser printers before, but decided not to do it because if I can make the product without having to do a lot of production, that's what I like. If I got a laser printer, I would have to do like a fair amount of production, but 
I can make it easier on myself depending on what product I design with the laser. So you can make it easier or harder, you know what I mean? If I can do it with the laser and then create the design to not be too labor intensive in terms of the production, then that would be good. It's kind of a huge thought bubble and I don't even know if it's appropriate for me to do that right now. In theory, I really want to do it, but there's a lot of logistical things. I don't know if it's going to work out or not. So I did a lot of studying. I spent actually quite a bit of time studying laser printers last week, looking at the different brands, like watching reviews, learning how they work, and the verdict's out. We'll see, I'm still not sure. I don't have like a workshop in my basement that's well ventilated and stuff. And it's not just like a printer, it's like a machine that requires venting and there's health hazards and stuff involved with it. So don't wanna do anything that's going to compromise my health at all. So anyway, that's it. So today what I'm doing is, let's see what was on my list, and then let's think about what I actually have done so far, shall we? So I have to place my orders. I have wholesale and retail. Then I wanna edit my class. But what I did was neither of those yet. <laughs> so I've been working on a shop email this morning. In the process of doing so, occurred to me that I have some products that are new that I haven't even put in the shop yet and that I really, really need to do that. I'll show you them. Acrylic pens, here they are. These are two popular designs of mugs that I have and I put them on acrylic pens because they're so cute and iconic. And then here's two more. This is my first foray into pens. I haven't done enamel pins at all. The acrylic pins, they're less expensive and they're super cute. So I thought I would give those a shot. I don't know how it's gonna go. We're gonna see. And this morning I've been taking some photos for the listings. That's what I've been doing. So now I have to go and do my orders and then I gotta get to work on the class. And then over here in my head too, I have a whole bunch of new designs that I wanna do that are in process. And I also have a halfway done sticker order that I just have to do the die cuts. Then I can put the order in. I'm super excited about those too. Slowly but surely, my stickers are growing. Remember when I told you about the licensing agreement? I got samples of the products. I did stickers with a company called Artists to Watch and they have a new sticker line and it's called Fun Folks. They license five designs from me. Here are the designs. 
So I really love the packaging of these. They can go right on a rack. And the, whole, the entire thing is like a kiss cut sticker. So it's a die cut, but it's kiss cut is when it's still stuck to the backing. So this is just like a really cool, innovative design and it does not require any additional packaging, which I love. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. So here's six out of the 11 new mugs in my most recent release. These happen to be the ones that I had close to me. I have these on my shelf in my studio. I like to use my mugs for coffee and stuff and I keep those in the kitchen and some of my new mugs are in the kitchen. So I just grabbed the ones that I had here. Hope you like them. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like they just get more and more detailed and I always try and ride that line so that the quality is sharp and on point and I still get to go bananas on all the details that I like to add so hope you enjoy these links are in the description if you want to see them happy Saturday so Matt and me are gonna go away for the weekend to my sister and her husband's Cape house before we leave which is gonna be in a couple of hours <laughs> I have to put away some of my mugs so I got my order of mugs last week and I need to put some in the basement in a tub because I have too many mugs going on so I took some of my new mugs and I put them up here. This one's called words that sound like they mean something else. It's all words that sound like they mean something else. <laughs> and then they're designed to look like the word that they sound like. Pretty high concept, but I just was dying to make this idea into a mug, so I did. Sometimes you just get an idea in your head and um, you know, it just doesn't let go. So sometimes I get ideas like that. One of the reasons I don't do limited edition things, it started out because my mugs just take too much time and energy <laughs> to design for me to like, then take it away after six months or whatever. But um, I like people to be able to get things when they want them. But early on, I guess early would be years ago, I noticed that um, some of my designs take a while to warm up. Some things don't just like psh, take off right out of the gate all the time, you know, or most of the time even, honestly. Some designs like creep up and they just hold on and like gain popularity slowly but surely. So um, that's like one of the fun things about putting a design out there and then watching it grow and develop and seeing if people like it or not. And then if people do like it, I love to hear ideas about how people would want to change it because sometimes little tweaks make all the difference so <laughs> that's really true anyway so back to my mug order i got my mug order i split some of them from up here to downstairs in the kitchen so i can use them and um now i have like an overflow of mugs on my mug shelf in the kitchen so i'm gonna go downstairs wrap them all up put them in a plastic tub and store them in my basement so I can just sort of rotate my mug designs because we don't have room for all my mugs. <laughs> I just have too many mugs. So I'm gonna go do that right now.
I finished packing my box full of mugs. It's gonna go in the basement. Just wanted to share a little bit about this box full of recycled paper that I use. So when I order something, I get this craft paper. I like to flatten it out, fold it, and keep it in a um, bin. And this is really, really great for <laughs> wrapping presents in and then drawing all over the wrapping paper. And it's something that I've done for so long and that I love to do so much that I decided to create a mini class about it. So it's called How to Make Your Own Hand-Drawn Gift Wrap Using Recycled Paper. And it's up now on Skillshare. So check it out. So anyway, that's what I do. I use it for gift wrap, but I also use it to wrap stuff if I need to. In addition to, you know, the typical bubble wrap, I actually save bubble wrap too, and I put it in the tub. So anytime I need some sort of cushiony filler and I don't have it, then I use the recycled stuff that I saved. Okay, let's get this in the basement. Hi, sweetheart.
Oh my God, I heard bees. Did you hear that? No, but I was watching. Like, I'm like, she's standing on top of it. I'm so scared. <laughs> he let me kiss him on the head. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Just wanted to show you this amazing, amazing place. So we came down for the weekend and I'm just gonna wrap up the vlog now. So we had a great weekend and today we're going home very shortly. And I just wanted to show you this beautiful, beautiful place. I wanna give you the whole panorama. I'm at my sister and her husband, Nick, my brother-in-law's house. They have this home on a marsh. So if we look over here, and then we're gonna go. This marsh, and you can take a boat out. It's beautiful. I mean, that's the actual ocean, but this is actual marshland. And you know what I love about it? Okay, I love all the different textures and colors. So if you look, I love these bale things. I don't know, there's some sort of a plant, but I love how they look like hay, and I love how they move in all those different directions. It's so cool. And it's just so lovely to just sit out here and paint. So yesterday, I was painting a little oh, still life, not still life, I was painting some of the plants down there. And I had two of those white chairs, one I was sitting on, one I had my paints on and my, one I had my water on. And then as soon as I was done with my painting, I put my painting down on the second chair behind the water. And I don't know how it happened, but I spilled water all over it. And um, that's okay. <laughs> So I was going to paint again this morning. I was going to do it again just because the universe wanted me to paint that again. And that didn't happen. It was raining all morning. So we're going to go home. And with a renewed sense of maybe I should get outside and paint more. So anyway... I'm going to end the vlog here, and I just wanted to thanks for watching my first vlog ever, possibly my only vlog ever. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!